It doesn't mean that you will fall down, it doesn't mean that you'll be in Maya just because you go into family life. Because you've already, he'd already been trained by Narada Muni, and so he's a good brahmachari. So a good brahmachari will be safe in household life. Yeah, because he's trained to control the mind and conquer the senses. He knows how to control the senses. So he's compared to a king living in his fortress. Just like a king in his fortress, he has to, he can defeat the enemies. When the enemy comes to attack him, he can defeat them. So the same way, somebody has been trained in household life, if they've been trained in family life, then they can conquer their lusty desires. Yeah, he can go anywhere without any problem, without danger. So the Vedic system is First of all, young men should be trained to be brahmacharis, to control their mind and senses. And when he is mature, then he is arranged to enter into family life, to take a wife. Then later on, he will retire from family life. He'll enter into the Vanaprastha, the retired ashram. The Vedas say in the, from the age of 50, one should prepare for the next life, one should be, be, begin preparing for the next life. Because by age of 50, half the life is over, so death warning is there. So they have to get ready. It takes time to, to, over, to get rid of the attachments to the material world. So that's why the Vanaprastha ashram is there, that we prepare for leaving the body. If you just stay in the family life, then when death comes, you're, you're still attached to the family. You'll come back in the family again. So sense, our senses are very powerful, they're very strong, it's not easy to conquer them. So the, the preparation, the training is there from the, be, from the beginning, first the brahmachari life. Mm. 
and then he enters into family life. In family life he has to be very careful to control the senses. When we are young, our bodies are very lusty, we have very strong material desires. So household life is a good training, it's a, you, you have to be constantly on guard to control your senses. So, Prabhupada said married life is like going to a feast but fasting, not eating. So, in, fam in married life there's always the opportunity for sense gratification and if we're not very careful then we can fall into maya. So Lord Brahma is instructing Priyavrata, he said that you have to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. This is a way, and this, when you take shelter of the Lord, then you'll be able to control the mind and the senses. And Brahma tells Priyavrata, Brahma tells Priyavrata, you will always be liberated from material association. And you'll be able to carry out the Lord's orders also. So the Lord has ordered Priyavrata to accept material enjoyment. It's different for different people. Some people, they're ordered to renounce and other people are ordered to accept material enjoyment. We have to accept Krishna's plan for us. So Prabhupada describes there are three kinds of men in this material world. Hare Bob? Yeah. Okay. okay. So there are three kinds of men in the material world. First one is the karmi. They're trying to enjoy the senses as much as they can. Sorry, broken. They are trying to enjoy their senses. The karmi wants to enjoy the senses. Above the karmi is the jnani. The jnani is trying to control the urge of the senses. Jnani 
and higher than the jnani is the yogi. The yogi, he has already conquered the senses. But none of these three are on the transcendental platform. They're all on the material platform. If they want to come to the transcendental platform, they have to use their senses for the pleasure of Krishna. So Lord Brahma is telling Priyavrata that he should be on the transcendental platform. He should simply fix his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna and enjoy the material world. The material world, be, the pleasure, the the material world becomes very insignificant. The ocean of the material existence becomes very small if we have taken shelter of Krishna. There's no danger for a devotee. But in material world, for material, for the everybody else, is danger everywhere. But by the grace of Krishna, devotee crosses over the material world very easily. So we have to fix. It's important to be to to follow the order of Krishna. Some devotees are put into opulence, just like Priyavrata. He has to become the ruler of the universe. And some other devotees are put into poverty by the arrangement of Krishna. Just like Kolaveka Sridhar, he was a great devotee, but he was very poor. And there was also Suklambar Brahmachari, he would live by begging. But Lord Chaitanya, one time he had Suklambar Brahmachari cook some rice for him. And Suklambar had, he went and begged some rice and then he cooked that rice for Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya said, oh, this rice is the best I've ever tasted, so nice. Mm. So a devotee is simply his duty is simply to follow the order of Krishna. We shouldn't get disturbed by the different material situations. Mm. 
Just like sometimes we may be invited into the homes of very wealthy people and we see their homes so opulent and we may think, oh, so luxury. And of course, they want, they bring people into their home, they want to impress them, and they'll feed them the, the most opulent food, and they'll let them sit in the most comfortable chairs. And all the people in the home will be very well dressed in the most in the best clothes and they will look very attractive. So a, sh a devotee shouldn't be thinking that we shouldn't think, oh, they're so lucky, oh, so wonderful, oh, we shouldn't envy them. Mm. Just like Lord Chaitanya, he was traveling to South India and he went to this temple, to, uh, he went to this one place and the Brahmana brought him to his home and asked him, come to his home and the Brahmana fed Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. So the Brahmana and all of his family, they all came and they worshipped Lord Chaitanya and they washed his feet and they fed him very nicely and they took very good care of him. And then after Lord Chaitanya had eaten the food and taken some rest, then he's ready to go and he's going to leave. But at that time the Brahmana then came to Lord Chaitanya and said, Oh please, I want to go with you. I cannot tolerate any more this materialistic life. Please let me come with you. Now the Brahmana wanted to run away from his wife and family. Lord Chaitanya would not allow it. Lord Chaitanya told that Brahmana that you stay here. And you, wherever you go, whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna. And in this way you should become a spiritual teacher. And Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana, if you do like this, then you will always have my association. I will never leave you. Lord Chaitanya was ordering this Brahmana that you should become, you know, you should teach people about Krishna consciousness. Now some people may think, oh, it's so much trouble. Yeah, some people think, oh, having disciples is so much trouble. Just like some people think, oh, having children 
you have children with so much trouble, you know, but having disciples also they think, oh, it's too much trouble. People want to avoid trouble. That's not good. No, it's proper to have children and raise children. That's very noble, very good activity. Krishna is pleased when people have children in God consciousness. Prabhupada said we need many children to take up Krishna consciousness. We want them to grow up to be nice devotees. But often we find young people today, they just want to live together, they want to enjoy sex, they don't want to have children. It's very bad. And the same way people don't want to accept disciples. They, they just want to chant Hare Krishna themselves, they just want to be Krish, worship Krishna. They don't want to teach anybody, they don't want to tell anybody about Krishna. But Lord Chaitanya has ordered everyone, they should become a teacher, they should tell people about Krishna. You don't have to leave the home, you can stay in your home. You don't need to leave home, just stay where you are and teach Krishna consciousness. Interesting. After Lord Chaitanya met that brahmana, then he met another brahmana. This one was called the leper Vasudev. And this Vasudev, his body was all diseased with leprosy. And the brahmana, he had the habit, if one of the worms which were eating his body fell out, he would pick it up and put it back in his body. So when Lord Chaitanya met this brahmana, Lord Chaitanya embraced him. And when Lord Chaitanya embraced him, immediately his body became healthy and strong. Not only did it be, he get free of the disease, but his body became effulgent and he became very uh, good looking. So when the Brahmana saw his body transform like that, he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, now, now I, it may be difficult for me to, uh, to, to stay out of Maya because I have this body, it may, I may be attracted to sense gratification. Brahmana就对主持人家说, 现, 现在呢, 我, 
，现在要想呃摆脱妈呀就很难，因为我的身体呢现在是这么有吸引力，就很容易被感官想乐所所受到吸引了。Yeah, when the body is diseased, then you don't think much about sense gratification. 当身体有病的时候，自然而然的就不不会想去从事感官享乐。But when the body is strong and healthy, then the thought of sense gratification will be there. 嗯，然而这个躯体，当年轻又力壮的时候，有健康的时候，自然而然的就会有感官享乐的念头冒出来。So Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana, he said yes. So now you have to constantly chant the holy name of Krishna. That will protect you from Maya. And you should also teach people what you know about Krishna consciousness. You should teach them the importance of spiritual life. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya instructed the two brahmanas. Then Lord Chaitanya left them. He, Lord Chaitanya would instruct people, and then he would just go away and travel another place. So in the same way, Lord Brahma has come to instruct Priyavrata. He's given them good instructions. Now he's finished, and uh, Priyavrata accepts the instructions of Brahma and he offers obeisances to him. 主 Brahma 就来教导了，给给了 Priyavrata 很好的教导 ，Priyavrata 就接受了他的教导，之后向他致以顶拜。Yeah, Lord Brahma is very, he's like the grandfather. He's the most important. He's the senior most person in the universe, and he was the grandfather of Priyavrata. So Priyavrata must be obedient to him. He must obey his instructions. Shri Brahma, 相当于 Priyavada 的祖父，也是这个宇宙当中，嗯，最资深年长的生物，所以 Priyavada 必须要顺从他，听他的话。Priyavada is a great devotee. He's a very advanced devotee, and the advanced devotee has to follow the order of. Priyavada 是那伟大的奉献者。He must the the duty of the advanced devotee is to follow the instruction. Of the spiritual teachers. Priyavrata is a great devotee, very advanced. So, as an advanced devotee, his duty is to follow the instruction of the spiritual teachers. Devotee should always think, "I am the servant of the servant of the servant." Devotee should always think, "I am the servant of the servant of the servant." Nobody should be proud and thinking I'm I'm advanced. I know, even Priyavrata is so advanced, but he's very humble. So Lord Brahma was also worshipped by Manu. Manu was the father of Priyavrata, and Manu also worships Brahma. Uh, Manu, Brahma. Um, Brahma is the father of Manu. Brahma Manu and both Priyavrata and Narada, they offer their respect to Narada Muni. And they don't have any bad feeling. Priyavrata and Narada, 两个人同时都向主 Brahma 致敬，内心当中没有一丝一毫的。Narada Muni accepted that 
Priya, Narada, Narada Muni had been trying to keep Priyavrata to stay with him in the mountain, but after Lord Brahma came, then he agreed. He accepted Lord Brahma's instruction. He accepted Brahma's decision as final. Initially, Priyavrata wanted to be the brahmachari, but now he's going back into the material life. But uh, Lord Brahma is uh, okay. Okay, so then uh, what happens after that? Then uh, Lord Brahma goes back to his place, Satyaloka, in the spiritual world. And Satyaloka is just at the edge of the spiritual world. It's not fully in the spiritual world, but it's right next to the spiritual world. Hmm. It's just beside the, the, the Brahma Jyoti, the effulgence which comes from the body of Krishna. And it's almost, almost on the level, almost not quite on the level of the Vaikuntha planets. It's described on the planet of Brahmaloka. There's no old age, there's no death, there's no anxiety, and there's no fear of any enemies. But this is Lord Brahma's planet. It's the highest planet in the material universe. So Narada Muni, uh, so, so, so Swain Bhuva Manu gave all of his responsibilities as the government, as the ruler, he gave it all to Priya Vrata. So Priya Vrata, he has to take the responsibility to maintain and to protect all the planets of the universe. Could we imagine how, what a big responsibility? You know, we try to maintain and protect one tiny home, one apartment, but Priyavrata was maintaining all the planets in the universe. So it's a great, great relief for Swain Bhuvamanu to get freed of that responsibility. Hmm. You see the difference between 
a ruler like Swayam Bhuvamanu and the politicians today. Politicians today, they're very attached to their position. They never want to give it up. And the Priyavrata, he didn't want to be the ruler. They had to persuade him, Lord Brahma had to persuade him to become the ruler. Nowadays people will kill other people to get that position, to be the ruler. Mm. So material, the material world is like that for materialistic people. They're trying to get big position, they want to control, they want to be in charge. But devotees are not so eager for that. So Narada Muni became also happy when he saw Priyavrata take the, take the kingdom and rule the kingdom. He was also glad that, okay, this is what the Lord wants, this is the plan of the Supreme Lord. So Narada likes to please the Supreme Lord. So this way Maharaj Priyavrata is engaged in all the affairs of the universe, material affairs. But at the same time, he's always thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord. He was pure, a pure devotee, but he accepted the duty just to follow the order of his superiors. Yeah, he was a, a liberated soul. He had no attraction for material life, but he's obedient to the superiors. Just like Arjuna. Just like Arjuna in the back, just like Arjuna on the battle of Kurukshetra, Arjuna didn't want to fight, but Krishna wanted him to fight. So Arjuna did it because Krishna wanted him to do it. So that's the the, the perfection of yoga when we do everything in Krishna consciousness. We do whatever we are asked to do, whatever we are told by the superiors. We take that as coming from Krishna and we try our best to follow the instruction. So, sometimes the yogis they're afraid to go to the go to the material world. You get some devotees, 
They say, no, I just want to stay in Vrindavan, I don't want to leave Vrindavan, I just want to be in Vrindavan, I don't want to go out of Vrindavan, I don't want to go... Or some people even they'll go and they, they go and hide in the forest or stay in a cave. They're afraid that Maya may capture them. But a devotee, one who's a real devotee, they're not afraid to go anywhere because they see Krishna everywhere. Yeah. Devotee doesn't see any difference between heaven and hell and liberation. Wherever he goes, he's just going to preach Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada gives the example. He said, just like you have this this uh, machine, this this uh, typing machine, you can only use it for typing. You can't use it for anything else. So he said, devotees like that, wherever you put them, they're just going to do the same, service for Krishna. They'll wake up early in the morning, they'll chant Hare Krishna, they'll read the books, they'll offer their food. They'll follow all the principles of Bhakti Yoga, whether they're in heaven or hell or liberation. Yeah, it doesn't change. Life of the devotee is the same everywhere. So sometimes even the people on the topmost platform, the topmost devotees, they will come down to the intermediate level so that they can go and preach. So Maharaj Priyavrata, he comes back, he takes over the kingdom, he's ruling the kingdom, so the married, he gets married, he's a, a suitable girl is brought to be his wife and he gets married and together they have ten children, ten sons and one daughter. He could have remained a brahmachari, but the Lord wanted to, him to come back and to rule the kingdom. When one is at home, to be in the home, one should have a wife with him. You can't think you can stay at home with your family, you can't think you can be at home with your mother and father, you're a brahmachari. That is not brahmachari. If one lives with the mother and father, lives with a family, 
that's not brahmachari life. That means that is family life. And in family life, you should have a wife. You're, if you're in a if you're in a greha in the home, then you should have a wife with you. Just like. Lord Chaitanya, the example is there, when Lord Chaitanya, his first wife died, so his mother told him, you should take another wife. So he got married again. Yeah, because Lord Chaitanya said, I am in householder life, so I should have a wife. You can't just simply stay at home and not have a, a, a wife. You should have a wife there. Brahmachari means live with the spiritual master. You live in the ashram with the spiritual teacher. So Priyavrata, so he, 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 had, he had, originally he was renounced, but he can still also be renounced even though he has a wife. But there's also, of course, there's also, this is also, to get married, this is not renunciation, this is actually enjoyment. So although Priyavrata had been following the path, although he had been renounced, now he's accepting enjoyment. So usually, usually it doesn't happen like that. So Prabhupada describes, he says sometimes people criticize him because he would do the marriage for some of his disciples. But Prabhupada explains we're beginning, it was a new society and we have to have people properly married. Prabhupada himself was renounced, but he had to encourage these people in the path of family life which is actually enjoyment. So Prabhupada explains this is Daivi Varnashram. Daivi Varnashram means establishing Varnashram without considering the birth. And Prabhupada said, this is one of the functions of the Hare Krishna movement, to establish this kind of Devi Vanashram. 
Yeah, people should be properly situated according to their qualities and their activities. They should be in the right ashrams. We have many devotees, not everybody is a brahmana. Not everybody needs to be brahmana, not everybody needs to be engaged in the temple. Some people can go out to work. Some people can be trained to do business and farming. And some people are good in administration work. Not everybody is meant to be a sannyasi or a brahmachari. Some, there, most people will like to get married and have a family. But they should be properly arranged. The, the man and woman should be suitably qualified for each other and they should live together peacefully in Krishna consciousness. Spiritual advancement does not depend on their ashram. We have to see their spiritual advance, we have to under, see how much spiritual knowledge they have and how much spiritual realization they have. So people have to be engaged according to their nature. Therefore, Prabhupada in the beginning, he got his disciples married. So we will stop here tonight, ask if there's any questions. Krishna,我们马达姐,你可以看到吗?你可以看到吗?我看到了,有一个问题。嗯,呃,两个问题。两个。呃,呃,两个问题。嗯。只看到一个。哦,第一个问题是,唱这位拉斯尼,顶拜
whatever others want in their heart. And under this situation, can he give a spontaneous love to Lord Krishna? This is the first part. Oh, just let me get this. Text 47, huh? Chapter uh -huh. 23, 47. 23, verse 47, 3, 23, 47. Okay, you're the knower of everyone's heart and he could grant whatever one desired. Knowing the spiritual soul, he, he regarded her as half of his body. Dividing himself into nine forms, he impregnated Devahuti with nine daughter, nine discharges of semen. The knower of everyone's heart and he could grant whatever one desired. And her question is? Can Kadama Muni give uh, others spontaneous love to Lord Krishna? Uh, because? Yeah. Because? Why? Because he can give fulfill others' desire in their heart. Yes, possible. But in this particular case, his wife had another desire. Sorry, Marjorie, the letter part is broken. Okay, uh, his, uh, you know, in this section it's talking about De Kardama Muni with his wife Devahuti. So Devahuti had the desire to have a child, to have children. Yeah, she at this point, you know, she, she didn't, she wasn't asking her husband to give her pure love of God. She just wanted to have children. And so, he does his duty as her husband and he arranges for her to have children. But of course, he's a great devotee, and he could have, he could actually give love of God. What's the second part of the question? The second part is that. Uh, Mm we will ask her further and we will move on to the next question. Okay. We should look at them equally. We should not look at their material situation. Um, 
Now, in the Krishna book, in the 10th canto, you have a nice example. It describes how Lord Krishna, when he was living at Dwarka, sometimes he'd go out around his kingdom and visit different people. So it describes how on one occasion he'd gone with all the great sages and what happened was they divided themselves into two. Krishna expanded himself and, and, and the great sages also expanded themselves and they went in two groups and one group went to the very wealthy king Bahalashva. Maharaj Bahalashva had a great kingdom, a great palace and all the sages went there and they were received in great opulence. And they received them in great opulence. Yeah, they brought very nice foodstuffs and everything was very opulent because the king is in the palace and so he had a lot of wealth. And they had big, big seat for Krishna, and then they gave Krishna a big bed to lay down and rest. Then Krishna went to see a Brahmana. The other group, one group went to the king, the other group went to this Brahmana. His name was Shruta Dev. And this Brahmana is very poor and Krishna comes here with all the sages and the Brahmana just washes the floor and puts out a straw mat for Krishna to sit on. And the Brahmana doesn't have any very nice food, he just has some very simple wild fruits when he, what he collects in the forest and he offers it to Krishna and the sages. And so Krishna didn't make any distinction. One was very rich, the other was very poor. But Krishna saw that they were both very great devotees and they were ex worshipping Krishna according to their means. Yeah, they both worship Krishna and they were very happy to receive Krishna as their guest. And Krishna is also happy to come to their home and be with them. He doesn't make distinction between one between the rich and the poor. He sees them all equal. Mm. So we should understand somebody, somebody uh, who's living in great opulence, then okay, it's the mercy of Krishna, the arrangement of Krishna. 
and somebody is in poverty-stricken condition, we understand also, oh, it's the arrangement of Krishna. Kolaveka Sridhar was very poor, so Lord Chaitanya was giving benedictions to the devotee and he called Sridhar to come and he asked Sridhar, take some benediction from me. Lord Chaitanya was revealing himself as the Supreme Lord. He was sitting on the throne of Vishnu and he was offering Sridhar any blessing he wanted, whatever he wanted he could ask for. But Kolaveka Sridhar asked Lord Chaitanya, bless me that I can go on the way I'm doing. Whatever income I get every day, I spend 50% to worship Mother Ganga. And so Lord Chaitanya said, don't you want some wealth? Wouldn't you, don't you want some, you know, some material prosperity? But Sridhar said, no, why? So Sridhar said, everybody is in the situation according to their past activities. The bird has his home in the nest in the tree and the king is living in the palace. Why should I change anything? I'm I'm happy doing living according to my situation. Hmm. Prabhupada also tells there was one spiritual master, he was living very simply, just eating some wild green leaves and some rice. So he had a rich disciple and the rich disciple came and wanted to give wealth to the guru. But the guru said, no, no, I don't need your money. I, I'll, I live whatever is arranged by the grace of Krishna. We're happy. Hmm. So this is the situ this is how devotees should view opulence like that. That so whatever opulence there is, we will accept it for the service of Krishna, not for our own sense gratification. Not for sense gratification. 
而而不是用于感官享乐。Do we have any other question? Hare Krishna. 刚才 Vilas 呃，刚才 Vilas 和大吉的那个问题。Yeah. 呃，他说，他说就是，呃，赐予别人对 Krishna 纯粹的爱，这个爱是物质世界没有的产品。他这种理解对不对？物质世界没有这样的产品，没有。In in the material world, there's no pure love for Krishna. Can 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 she understand that the pure love for Krishna is not product of this material world? Yes, right. Pure love for Krishna. Where does it come from? It comes from the spiritual world. Just like the holy name, where does the holy name come from? The holy name comes from the spiritual world. We say Golokera Primadana Harinam Sankirtan. The Sankirtan of the holy name comes down from the spiritual world. At the same time, we can say love of Krishna is in everyone's heart, and it's awakened by hearing. 同时呢，我们应该看到，对神的爱也处在众生的心中，可以通过聆听来得到唤醒。We don't. We just have to. We we have to continually hear and that love for Krishna, which is there in the heart, because Krishna is in our heart. So love of Krishna is also there in our heart, and it's awakened the more we hear. So, the Krishna love is also in our heart. So, the more we hear, the more it is awakened. In the Krishna Yesai woman the syndrome. So we have that loving relationship with Krishna, but we're forgetting because we're in conditioned souls in the material world. But the liberated souls, they're not in the material world. <laughs> they may appear, they look like they're in the material world, but they're seeing Krishna everywhere. Yeah, devotee sees everywhere the spirit. He sees it, Krishna everywhere. He sees it, everywhere the spiritual world. There's no material world for the pure devotee. Feng Feng Xian Zhong, he sees everywhere the spiritual world. There's no material world for the pure devotee. 纯洁的奉献者没有看到物质世界，纯洁的奉献者他们就看到灵性世界 ，right？ 嗯，纯粹的奉献者看不到物质世界，他们只看到灵性世界。嗯，哦 ，OK， 还有问题吗？也有其他的问题没有？ Sati, Hare Krishna, Guru Mani. Hare Krishna. 
啊，我我还有一个染指泡沫的问题，你没看到吗？嗯，我这个嗯、呃、没看到哈，我读一下。算了算了，好哎。啊，染指泡沫的问题，灵性的爱是我们是我只知道纯粹的。嗯，具体有哪些？怎么和物质上区分？就是灵性的爱是只是纯只只是纯粹的爱，嗯，这些存在具体有哪些内容？然后怎么和物质上的爱区分？怎么说？物质的爱区分 ？How to see material love？ 反正 ，Good money。Me funny, ma. Hmm. Contents. Yeah. So, spiritual love is pure love. So, what's the contents of、uh, spiritual love?、Oh. And what's the difference between spiritual love and the material love? Okay. So, spiritual love is where you simply want to give to the other person without. Anything, expecting anything in return. Pure love, spiritual love, is described in Shikshastika, the final verse of the Shikshastika prayer. 最最 it shows that this verse shows the mood of Radharani. So Radharani is saying that if my suffering makes you happy, that is my happiness. That is pure love. But material in the material world, it's a different thing. In the material world, one person says to the other, "Your job is to make me happy." Yeah, <laughs> so that's the difference: material love and spiritual love. Actually, the material world and the spiritual world have a difference. Clear, ma? Rajendra, is it clear? Sati, Tongi, ma? <笑><笑>好的，古代我们还有没？还有一个问题啊。嗯，古文达拉尼尼马达吉就就发上来一个问题啊。古拜古代感恩翻译和群里的家人，想问一下，在自己家人面前总是底气不足。尤其不擅长展示奎什纳之觉，总想尽,尽可能隐藏，因为我们之前，因为这件事相互伤害了，他们心里对奎什纳之觉也产生了很深的误解，可能我需要找机会澄清这些误解，也随着我越来越成成熟，让他们慢慢产生更好、更多的好感，对吗？家人。嗯，这好方式呢？还有一个问题，这是不是太长了？郭曼丽曼德金，我我先读到这儿吧、嗯，后面还有一部分。啊啊啊！这是第一部分。嗯，对。嗯。啊、uh, ，in 呃、uh, ，in front of my family members， 嗯 ，usually I don't have quite a lot of confidence. I do, I'm I'm not expert to demonstrate Krishna consciousness. I also want to hide Krishna consciousness, because we have hurt each other 
they have uh, misun misunderstood me. I want to clar cl clarify Krishna consciousness to them. Uh, uh, as soon as I become more mature, uh, so that they have a good uh, feeling to me. Uh, is that right? And uh, also and the, the attitude of a family me our family member is the test to our spiritual practice. No, it's not right. Your family are not devotees and you won't be able to convince them about Krishna consciousness. It doesn't matter how much you think you're mature or not, they're not going to change. Because they see you, they see you as their little girl and they think you're just misguided. They want to see you a good materialist like them. So, I don't think you're dealing with them. I don't think you... I think you, you have to be very careful how you deal with them. You don't want to get too close with them. Just try to be Krishna conscious in your own home with your husband and your child. The most difficult people to preach to are your parents. So I don't encourage you to try. Don't waste your time. You just get depressed and disappointed when you fail. Jai Ibufan Shishama Tadawanti. Hashua she had some um, obstacles to introduce Krishna consciousness to others it's, uh, in, in her heart, um, especially to those who have who are not so interested to Krishna consciousness, and therefore she cannot preach everywhere and to whoever she she meets, and she is afraid. That Regard to her as very unnormal. Um, well, so oh. that she had missed uh, some opportunities to preach. So, what to do? What to do? For, I think you're, you're wasting your time trying to teach, trying to preach to people who are not interested. Mm. 
That's a waste of time. It's an offense to try to instruct people who are faithless. You have to create faith in people first. You have to do that by usually what we the the the, the, the have, we have kirtan, and if people like kirtan and prasadam, then gradually they develop faith. If they don't like kirtan, don't like prasadam, then you're wasting your time. You can simply maybe give them a book, let them try to read, ask them if they read the book, ask them is it interesting or not. If they say no, not interesting, then they don't waste any more time. So you're not you you don't know who to preach to. This is the problem. You're not experienced. You don't know who to preach to and who not to preach. You have, you're making offenses by trying to preach to people who have no faith. So, be careful. <laughs> yes. Shuddha. 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 Yes, there's no real love in the material world. It's more, it's, you know, that relationship between men and women, it's more for the, you know, what, what is giving us pleasure in our senses, what is satisfying our senses. It's not spiritual. So with, you're saying, is it pure? Can it be pure in the material world? Not, nothing, the material things are not pure. They're all contaminated by the modes of nature, goodness, passion or ignorance. And so the, the relationship between the couple, it may be in the mode of ignorance, it may be in the mode of passion, it may be in the mode of goodness. So sometimes it's in the mode of goodness, but sometimes it changes to the mode of passion, sometimes it changes to the mode of ignorance. We have to bring it up. If you want pure love, 
It has to be in relation to Krishna. There has to be some connection to a Krishna consciousness to have pure love. So, just like in the spiritual world, there can be men and women, husbands and wives, you know, they, they can be married and like that. They're pure. But it's not that we're against these things, but everything must be, you know, if you want pure love, well, like I said, pure love. Radharani is saying to Krishna, if my being broken-hearted, my, my pain, that makes you happy, that is my happiness. You know, we cannot imitate Radharani. <laughs> yeah, we can, you know. My Prabhupada also said, material world, every man needs a woman, every woman needs a man. We just have to try to keep Krishna consciousness. So, to be Krishna conscious, we should try to come to the mode of goodness. Then from the mode of goodness, then it's easy to transcend, to come up to the transcendental platform. The mode of goodness means no passion, no ignorance. Okay. Okay. Jinten Dao Jara Kaima. Okay, you have a good day. Okay. Shishi Daja. Say, Nidu Venti Tida Hen Hao. Well, wait, that Butai Hao. Okay, Hare Krishna, one an. Hare Krishna, one an,